Okay, everybody. I believe you have survived waiting for us this long. How awesome. How awesome everybody is. I just have to say that uh, we have been working out some kinks here, and uh, we are a hop, skip, and away from being with you, Tanya, today. Get a few things taken care of here. Give us a moment, and we're going to be ready to go. Straight from Australia. We've got, uh, well, you know what? Let's just do this. I know you're out there somewhere. I know you're out there somewhere. I just know you're, because we were working on the kinks, so we got everything taken care of, right? You're nodding your head, <laughs> but I don't hear you speaking. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Need to take it. No, no, no. Everything no. We've is been sorted. Fun. Tanya's been waiting for us. She's been so awesome waiting for us. Uh, we are. Thank you. <laughs> I love doing live. I really do, you guys. I want you to know I do. Uh, Tanya, I see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're rolling through some music and getting things situated. I'm trying to get your comments up there. But I tell you this much. I've been waiting to do this today. And uh, I hope you enjoy the show, everybody. Um, <laughs> here we go. I'm, I'm, we're getting everything situated. And, and Tanya, I didn't get my hair cut. So... I hope you don't mind. We are going to bring cameras on in a minute, but uh, uh, we were just, uh, like I said, a few hiccups at the beginning, and I love it. That. <laughs> okay, you guys are awesome. You guys are too awesome. Okay, all right. We got everything in line here. We're good. All right, we're good. We're good. Love it. How you doing, my friend? I'm on. You're you're here. Uh, we I mean, did it, yeah, we? finally we did it, huh? <laughs> we go like finally we did it. Hey, you know what? Water separates us, land separates us, but we made this happen today. Let me go ahead and shut this off. So I'm well, just going to go did. straight and shut it off. Yes, we, we did. did. We, I did we say you're not very technical, so the, if there's <laughs> some issues, I apologize. We we had we had this happen just right before we were going to go on everyone and uh as a team because uh, anybody that comes on the show as it is as i tell my children as a family we are a team and so we work it out together and we worked it out together and uh, we here did. we are we worked it out and so uh i just laugh when these things pop pop up and happen and uh i'm going to uh you're getting some love here from tanya and i want to go back here i'm gonna huh? go back here for a second because uh, i'm trying to get make sure i don't miss anybody's comments that were here uh, did I say hand pick waving? I, I, I like that. Is that a smile too? Yeah, that's a smile in there. I'm trying to make sure I get everything. And uh, everybody's comments up. And then we're going to go ahead and see, What does that say? Okay. What, you, what does that say, Tanya? Uh, again, I should be on this other screen over here and I can see everything. Let me get this out of the way. Here we go. Now I can see better. Ooh, I can see it now. Okay. I got too many screens in here. All right. <laughs> We weren't planning to start the show this way, but we started it and we're ready to go. And you got to do me a favor. <laughs> yeah, I saw this coming and here it is. I see it already popping up on the screen. You have a very beautiful name. So I'm Thank gonna you. I'm going to put this up on the screen because it's like they know my show notes where I'm going with this. Here it is. So um, how did you get your beautiful name and how is it pronounced? Um, it's Shirley. It's a, actually an Aboriginal name, and my father named me uh, because I'm a twin. So my mother said, I'll name one. You can name the other. So he's Australian. He was Australian. He's passed away now, and he named me Shirley. And it's after a book okay. um, and a movie. Yeah. You beat me to yeah. it. I was going to say a book. Yeah. So yeah. have you ever seen the famous book that you were named I've after? I've got the book. I've actually oh, got the you? book. I haven't read the book. Oh, okay. All right. And I have seen the movie, but a long, long time ago. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's about uh, a father and daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Going for in Australia, um, Aboriginals go walkabout, which means they can just go and travel and do things and 
probably gather themselves and hunt and gather and gather spiritually as well. So he um, takes his daughter uh, on a walkabout mm-hmm. and assuredly is uh, something that you hold, like the most important things to you. So if you're going to go for a walkabout, what do you need? Matches, light, you know, you need um, the things that are going to um, make you safe. So assuredly is like that. Yeah, oh, it's interesting. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. What is there about you now that is different from when you were telling your story of surviving or trying to survive abuse back then? What is it about you now that you would say that is different? Uh, I That's an interest, uh, interesting question. I would say uh, I've healed a lot more. Mm-hmm. I've let go of a lot more. I moved countries. So I'm in a totally different environment where I feel safer okay. because I didn't feel safe where I was. So I actually mm-hmm. left, you know, the country, my birth country, to really break free because I wasn't, even with all the protection from the police, I wasn't really protected. Mm-hmm. So for me to be able to feel really safe and to just 100% break free from this person's grasp, I left the country, so I've settled in and and I can walk the streets and not feel someone's watching me or Mm. following me or, yeah. So that's, I think, what's happened for me. You feel Mm. safer now than you did back then? So, so much safer. Yeah. 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 So So much safer. Let's do a little timeline of you dealing with this narcissist. So you met someone who proved to be not safe. Matter of fact, I think you described them as, and if I correct me if I say this wrong, antisocial, he was diagnosed diagnosed as it were, right? How yeah. Yeah. So yeah, through so this isn't just my opinion that he's a yes, narcissist. The, the clinical diagnosis is actually um a psychopath, sociopath. So that's in court documents. And through um, a mental health facility in uh, New Zealand, so he is a sociopath. And yeah. your your birth country, the country of your birth, is what again? New Zealand. But now you had to literally escape from there, as it were. You've had for yeah. your safety, and it's not just you. You have two children, if I remember correctly. Yeah, two, do- two, two daughters. Two daughters. Yeah, two daughters. Yeah. yeah, you had to escape from your your homeland. And now you live in Australia, correct? If I remember. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Then, I had to do that. Why did you have to do that? And give a little background so that others who are going through it can have a sense of knowing that, well, eventually um, recovery is possible. Um, I had to leave because I was being okay. I mean, I married this man. We met in our 20s and had two children. And very early on, I knew that there was a problem, but I didn't realize that it was going to escalate and become just a living nightmare. I knew he was dishonest. So, you know, to break it down about how I got here to get safe is, you know, the psychological violence, the threats, the stalking, protection orders in place. He was still contacting me through fake accounts and it was just so draining. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to break free when you're constantly being stalked. So I had to I had to make the decision to leave. So mm-hmm. as soon as we could leave the country legally without permission, we left as soon as she was basically 16, just a, a few weeks before she was 16. Because you can't leave. Because he had put blocks on our the girls' passports in the past. Mm. So... Um, as soon as we were in a position where we could legally do it, we, we left. Yeah. Your life, your life with your life with him. If you had to give it, give a description of that life. Um, I'd say I like a horror movie or Hmm. just, just complete sadness, Hmm. complete sadness and, um, chaos. Yeah. But I'd say it, for me, it was like a horror movie. Financially, what was it like? Um, everything, everything financially, 
I had to be in control of everything because this is a person that would, um, because my ex-husband's also a sociopath, he's not just a narcissist, so he was a pathological liar and he was also a a kleptomaniac. Um, And he would lose a job every six months Mm. and not always tell me. So one minute would be paid weekly, then you get a new job, then it's monthly, then it's fortnightly, and then it's it was just chaotic financially. All, all over the place, all over the place. All over the place. You never knew. You never knew what was going on. And he'd often lose a job and not tell me, and then he'd go to work in the mornings and come home, and he'd be looking for work. And I'd be like, how was work? Oh, you're good today. But he didn't have a job. <laughs> Even um, stole money from his mother, a check, and banked it and cashed it, put it into our account to make it look like wages were going in. So I didn't get, so his, he would do that. So he did that a number of times. He stole from his mother to put money into our account to make it look like just he was working when he, he wasn't. When, um, when, because we, I had to go through the family court with him and criminal court and civil court. So in the family court, uh, one of the top New Zealand psychologists did a report on the family we we were never allowed to keep the report because it has personal information about both of us in it, but we were allowed to read it. So it is locked at a court. You can't take it home with you. But in it, the, the psychologist does mention that the, the mother is just in complete denial about her yeah. son's behavior. And yeah. she would cover up for him, and she didn't tell me till later on he did that. Just let him, yeah just enabled his um, delusions. Um, I I don't think they really knew because oh. they were young. Like I actually left him when Lauren, I think, was 10. Um, but that doesn't mean it ends. So it didn't end there. So they were young. They didn't really know what was going on. They didn't know that their dad was losing jobs. I just kept everything together. They didn't know he was a pathological liar. Mm. They didn't know he was stealing from where he was working. They didn't know any of that. Because when you're 10 and 7, you don't know what's going on. I just tried to keep keep things um, stable and smile and pretend Uh that everything was okay. And they didn't actually know till after I left him, they would go, he moved in with his mother. And they would go and visit on the weekends. And then I'd say Lauren sort of got to around about 13 and then she started to see things Mm. and then she started to question things Mm. because she didn't realize when she was younger. So she started to see what was really going on and and then she started to um, confront him. But it, it, it wasn't until she was older heading towards a teenager that she did that. The only thing challenging for me was leaving my daughter. Everything else was relief. Wow. Was relief. Only leaving my daughter behind was hard, but everything else, I mean, my mum, of course, but my mum's older and she's sick and she doesn't know that I've gone. But Mm. Mm. it was, it was joy leaving except for my leaving my daughter yeah i was excited i knew it was the right thing to do i knew it would change my life um and it it has uh but it was it was of course the only thing that was one hesitation was my daughter